Thank you, Chris. Uh, an honor to be here this morning. Yeah, I am from Kokoda in Papua New Guinea. If you don't know where Kokoda is or what in Australian history, I guess you should go back to school. No, just joking. <laughs> yeah, I've been in the Philippines for nearly 30 years and uh, um, I still live there. I sometimes think, uh, how did I end up here? Because of many reasons. Uh, just like uh, what you were told a while ago, I, be, I go to different countries. I think if you're aware of uh, Pastor Jeremy Steele. Mm -hmm. No, yeah, you feel like that. <laughs> yeah. The sun goes, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I, I travel I, I, I travel most of the time with him, uh, helping Pastor Barry and all that he does. So just recently I was in Myanmar, uh, and they do a great, you know, a real good work. And so on behalf of what... Pastor Barry does, and what I am involved in, like to thank you all for all your support towards what he does. And uh, thank you also for raising money for, you know, making me feel cool. <laughs> I actually come here and I'm a bit shaky. So I was uh, just, don't mind if I shake up here because, you know, the weather is a bit different. I'm used to a very hot weather, and you just I just arrived yesterday, and I was just telling someone this morning that I, it, it's just like flying all the way from Africa to get, you know, so I have to go from Manila to Sydney, Sydney to Melbourne, Melbourne to Adelaide, so you know what I mean. Anyway, uh, yeah, so thank you. We haven't got, actually bought the air condition yet. Because it's not my problem. It's the problem of those who own the place. So what we have is, you know, there's a leakage up on the roof, and it gets to the uh, cement because the ceiling is cemented. So it leaks throughout the place. So I keep checking, and it's been, I think it's eight or nine months now since you sent the support. And it's still there in the bank. And hopefully I get my air conditioned very soon. <laughs> yeah, just last Tuesday, the, the, there was a guy, I think, the owner of the house or owner of the whole building has to contact a guy and who came uh, looking, checking at everything. So hopefully they get it done quickly. But anyway, thank you very much for all that. So uh, this morning I'm going to share a uh, little bit about encountering Jesus or encountering Jesus in your personal lives. So it's related to what uh, Cass has already informed you a while ago. There's a subject or maybe a series on encountering Jesus. So we're going to take a look at its personal encounter with Jesus. Uh, we'll look at Luke chapter 5 verse 1. Uh, up to verse 11. So one day as Jesus was standing by the lake of uh, Gennesaret, the people were crowding him around him and listening to the word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats one belonging to Simon. I like all of us to take note of that. A boat belonging to Simon. And asked him to put out a little from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. So just a little comment on that. Sat on the boat 
So if you ever thought of where this idea of platform ministry, pulpit, right? If you kind of ask, where did that come from? So now you, you, you find it from scripture, it's there, right? So that's just a little joke. <laughs> so when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, that's verse 4, put out into the deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything, but because you say so, I will let down the nets. Take note of that. Verse 6, when they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that the nets begin to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help. And they came and filled both boats. So they began to sink. Verse 8, when Simon saw, when Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. Verse 9, for he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of the fish they had taken. And so when James and John, the sons of Jebedee, uh, Peter's partners, when they saw uh, Peter's partners, then Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. Verse 11. So they pulled out their boats up on the shore and left everything and followed him. So that's the verse we're going to look at. So I would like to title it as Simon's Encounter with Jesus. So because Simon, the name Simon is repeated around six times on the verse. Okay. Simon, 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 Simon. So my name is Peter. And I decided not to include Peter because I might be preaching and calling Peter's name and you would say, oh, well, he might be speaking about himself. So let's just say Simon. So Simon encounter with Jesus. Very important in this verse. When you look at the story, uh, Jesus is speaking to the crowd. The crowd gets around Jesus. Okay, they're pressed. They are crowding around Jesus just to listen to the word of God. Jesus is preaching. Jesus is teaching. And people are just crowding around him. And uh, however, Jesus singles out an individual, a person. Imagine this. There's a church happening it's a church called Lakewood. I know, not Lakewood, but we should say Lake Genesaret. The Bible says where two or three are gathered in his name, he is in the midst, right? Yeah. Now, in here, instead of two or, two or three gathering in his name, there's a, many people coming. And so he is preaching, he is teaching the word and people, according to scripture, they are listening to him right so the crowd is listening but then out of the whole crowd Jesus singles out an individual that's very important to note and this in individual's name is Simon right doesn't close his eyes you know because there were two boats Close his eyes and come. I do not know if you do that here, but the guess, you know, mini, mini, money more. <laughs> That's for this days. No, no, no. The Bible says he got into the boat that is belonging to Simon. So this connection is very, very important because Jesus somehow get himself engaged okay get himself you know he, he single out an individual by the name of Simon and so out of that preaching and all of that he get himself engaged 
All right? Simon's boat. He gets in there. He tells Simon, hey, Simon, hey, Sai, in, in the Philippines, we say, hey, Sai, the shortcut for Simon. Hey, Sai, can you move this boat out, you know, off the shore? And so Jesus gets in there. But this idea that, this, this, you know, sometimes I think, why, 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 did, why is Simon kind of not asking some, you know, questions? Who are you? That's my boat. Get out. Come on. Why are you entering into my personal, private life? This is a personal thing. Have you ever thought of that? This is a stranger. Mr. Stranger, get out from my boat. You know, if, if, you, if, you, keep, you know, if you keep interfering into my personal life, I'll take you to court. I mean, I mean in today's world, where everything becomes private, 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 privacy, all right? Maybe it will end up messy, right? They could have. But somehow, you know, uh, somehow Simon entertains that. So the first thing I'd like to talk about is hearing and obeying. Okay, hearing and obeying require a encountering Jesus requires hearing and obeying or hearing and obeying leads to an encounter as many times you can come to church and sit around as a crowd right crowd gathered but it can be a best people who encountered God or encountered Jesus in their personal lives are people who allowed themselves so that Jesus Involves in their life. Jesus gets engaged in their life. Jesus speaks into their life. Jesus gives instructions or, and, and, and they follow. That leads into personal encounter. So you see, why do people come to church and live or enjoy church? But church becomes a routine. It becomes another religious thing. You can come, and we, be, we can come to church, praise and worship is good, preaching is good, but when you go back home, it's the same. There's no real breakthrough, there's no real change, there's no real uh, progress in life. And, 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 and so I believe uh, it's hearing and obeying that leads to encounter. Jesus enters into Peter's personal space and Peter entertains it. How many of us like personal space? This is my world. You don't have any rights, right? When someone asks you questions, hey, don't touch. And so Peter kind of entertains a stranger who enters into his personal space. Peter get, is, Jesus gets into the boat. And just imagine Peter just ha, have come from a whole night trying to fish. Caught nothing. Fishing was his business. And he's a fisherman by profession. So naturally he is supposed to know time and season, when and where to go fishing. And so at the end of the day, he is supposed to be successful. Is that right? Yeah, he's supposed to be successful, but at this time, he feels failure, unsuccessful, trying whole night. And here he comes washing his net. It's end of me. I'm done. I'll clean the nets, go home. Who cares about business? So you, you, you kind of have that. So Jesus enter into his personal space. He gets into the boat. He tells Peter, can you move this uh, boat offshore? So, so we can also say that this is Peter's lowest point in life. One of the lowest point. He has caught nothing. He has failed. And sometimes the lowest point in our life can bring an opportunity 
for us to encounter Jesus. Right? Peter's done, ready to go, cleaning up. Here comes Jesus, gets into his boat. He doesn't say anything. He entertains him, and he said, man, we're going to begin again. We're going to start all over again, right? But that's what's happening. Now, when you look at the story, Jesus just says something to Simon, and Simon obeys. Simon responds in obedience. And so the first thing happened, get this thing out of the shore. The second instruction is that you get this thing right into the deep. The third thing is that you let down your nets. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So you see, Simon is just listening to what Jesus is saying, and he is following. He is obeying. Right? So encounter with Jesus requires hearing and obeying. All right? The book of James says, do not be the hearers of the word only, but be doers of the word. Okay? The, remember the story of Jesus talking about the wise and the foolish builder? It says, the wise builder is one who heard the word and put into practice who built his house on the rock. So just, just, just obeying leads into miracle. Jesus, Simon says, Master, we've been trying whole night and we've caught nothing. But because you say so, we will do it. I will do it. Right? So you see, hearing and obeying brings a real uh, change in life. So yeah, hearing and obeying leads to a real life-changing encounter with Jesus. It's not just an encounter, but an encounter that brings about change. Right? There are many people who encounter Jesus and they will be praising God. Thanking God, but there is no real change. But we're talking about encounter that brings about real change, right? Uh, so that's very important for us to take note. Secondly, an encounter with Jesus brings a sense of humility, surrender, and trust. You let go yourself. As I said a while ago, Jesus enters into Peter's personal space, personal life, personal property. And Jesus and Peter says, Simon Peter says nothing. It just entertains him. He allows Jesus to even instruct him what to do. Move the boat. No, I'm not moving the boat. Excuse me, this is my property. Who are you, Mr. Stranger? But then he slowly responds in obedience and moves the boat. And then, just imagine if you were in Peter's shoes and you haven't slept all night and, and you've been trying to catch fish and you caught nothing and here you are cleaning the net and a stranger walks in and it, it, you can be irritated. You can be angry, right? Who are you? But in Simon Peter's case, he just, he just allowed Jesus to, you know, give instruction. So encountering Jesus really brought about a sense of humility and uh, repentance in his heart, in his uh, whole entire spirit. Now, when you look at it, Peter's, Peter came and nailed before Jesus and said, get, you know, get away from me. I am a sinful man. The simple reason is Peter realizes that this is, uh, something is happening. He has encountered the Lord and this miracle is taking place. Remember, 
he catches so many fish. Number one. Number two, when they caught the fish, the boats begin to sink, right? So I used to call it a miracle sink, <laughs> you know? It, it, it's a miracle sink, right? Because it's not just an ordinary, you know, but it's the sinking of the boat is part of the miracles that are happening. Uh, anyway, uh, the other thing that has had to happen in our life is that you have to understand that as encountering Jesus, many times it opens doors of opportunity, uh, partnership, networking, and shared responsibility. You see, when, they were, when Simon was catching the fish and the fish was too much, he never said, oh, this is my fish. This is my miracle. This is my church. This is my business. This is my, my thing. This is not, he never said that. He began to see the miracles happening and he began to see that so much has been caught. He began to call out. The Bible says they signaled the other boat. They signaled their uh, friends. So opportunity for partnership, opportunity for new relationship, network, Shared responsibility. You know, many times, you know, when we become, you know, so religious and you know, everything becomes routine, there are sometimes we're not in good terms with other people. Okay, we become very self centered. It's mine, it's mine, it's my business, it's my, it's mine. But you see, the more you encounter Jesus, when we encounter Jesus, it helps us to become good partners. It, it opens doors of new partnership and networking and sharing responsibility. Also, encountering Jesus causes us to uh, complete trust in Jesus. He is our hope and he is our help. Right? They came to an end of themselves. They're down. Disappointed, discouraged, ready to go home, wash up everything, you know? There's no, there's, there's, it's, it's, it's the end of the rope. Are you understand that? End of themselves. And that's when Jesus comes in. That's when Simon begins to open his heart and allow Jesus to dictate his life. Jesus to engage in Simon's personal life. Jesus gives instructions, and Simon just hears and obeys, leads into miracle. You understand? And that's, that's, the, that's the most important thing in life as a Christian. As Christian people, we must not just come as a crowd to church and praise, worship. It's good. It's good. It's good, too. I, like, I love that. I like that. I'm sure you like it as well, right? Enjoy the fellowship. Well, what gets us more deeper, more breakthrough, more progress is when we hear and begin to follow, begin to obey. Then we discover there are many things that God wants to do in our life. We learn to trust him. Master, I've been doing this for a whole night, but because you say... I trust in you. I will let down the net because you said so. That's total dependency on Jesus. Amen. He is our help. I caught nothing. But now I know I will catch because you are my help. Because you said it so. Because I will follow you. Because I will obey you. One of the things that also does when we encounter Jesus is it reveals who we are as human beings. It reveals our, our limitations. Our human limitations. Our lack and failures are revealed. Causing us to completely surrender to him. That's what Simon did. 
He said, I've, I've got nothing. I worked all night. But because you said it so, Master, I will let down my net. Right? I will put extra time and effort. Because you said it so. And that's total trust in what Jesus said. You're my hope. I've come to an end of myself, but you're my hope. Beautiful songs we're singing a while ago. I like that. You're my hope. You're my help. I trust in you. I've caught nothing. I have failed. I've come to an end of myself. But I'll let it. I'll give it a try because you said it. There's some here this morning. So worship was going on. I felt some of you feel the end of yourself. Which is good. Because it provides a new opportunity for you to respond. How many of us going through that sense, that feeling that nothing is happening in life in your kind of your kind of end of the rope? Jesus is your help. Amen. Jesus is your hope. 2005, we were, my wife uh, and myself and our daughter Christine were in, in uh, Melbourne. And uh, I had the Lord speak to me on a verse of script, on the verse in the Bible, which is very familiar to many of us about Jesus and Peter. Jesus asked Peter, do you love me? And, and Peter says, yes, Lord, I do. Three times. But this is a very familiar story. But it gets to John chapter 21 and verse 18. This is what Jesus said to Peter. When you were young, you went wherever you want to go. But as you get older, someone will blindfold you and lead you or take you to places you do not want to go. Now, by then, I have been in Manila or in the Philippines for nearly, nearly 20 years, I guess. Okay, more than that. But I used to feel or think and pray to the Lord, Lord, if you send me to Palawan or to Mindanao area, to Cebu or to Legaspi, this is different parts of the Philippines, I am willing to go. But Lord, never send me to Manila. I hate it. Lord, don't send me to Manila, please. To the other parts of the Philippines, yes, send me, but not to Manila. And I had reasons why. I was very sickly. I had nearly every day I would have asthma. You see photos there, one of the one in Cebu, that's me, with my, you know, when we had our little girl, Christine. Can you see how skinny I was? Compare that to now. I am full gospel. <laughs> but just imagine I used to have asthmatic attack nearly every day. And the doctor said to me, well, you always get sick and you're, you're always living on medication. So you, number one, you look old. That's what he said to me. Why is, you look old? I want to look young. Hello? That's what the doctor said to me. You will look much older than your age because of, you know, you, you live on medication, number one. Secondly, he said, you will look thin most of, your, most of the time. And he, and he said, it's very difficult because medications are not working. You, 
you know, we give you medication, it just relieves you, and next day you are down again. But anyway, what does this story connect to my moving to Manila? Remember, I just told you the verse that God spoke to me. John 21, verse 18. When you were young, you went wherever you want to go. But when you're old, someone will blindfold you to take you to places you do not want to go. So, so the opportunity for us to move to Manila came and there was a lot of discussion going on between Pastor Barry, myself, and some other leaders, Pastor Alan as well. Anyway, Pastor Barry asked me, he said, you should move to Manila. And I said, no. I said, why? Because, of course, the crowd, the people, this ocean of people. You know, I said, I don't like to go to Manila because of the crowd. Jesus, uh, Pastor Barry said, do you ever remember in scripture that the Bible says Jesus was among the crowd? I said, oh yeah, I, I remember that. Secondly, I said, because of the pollution, you know, because of my, you know, health problem, living how much more it would be when you compare, you know, in Cebu, I was still having this thing, and Manila is very polluted. So I didn't want to go to Manila. But remember the word of the Lord. That's why I say, hearing and obeying leads to encounter with Jesus. Encounter that brings a complete change in life, releases you to do what God wants you to do. And uh, so I've been in Manila for the last 13 years. But in the 13 years that I've been to Manila, I have never had asthma anymore. Okay, there hasn't been any asthma in the last 13 years. That is a miracle in itself. Hearing and obeying brings about encounter. Encounter that totally changed the perspective of our life. Totally changed who we are as a person. A uh, personal encounter with Jesus brings real change. Change changes everything in life. A real meaning and purpose of life is revealed. In other words, you discover, you understand the real meaning of life and why you are, you know, why you were born and what's God's purpose upon your life. Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you will catch people. And so he discovers, out of this encounter, discovers the purposes of God in his life. Following and serving Jesus, or serving and living for Jesus brings great joy and fulfillment. You, 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 you find greater joy, you know, and greater meaning in what you do. There is a sense of fulfillment. And that's what happens as we encounter Jesus in our life. Allowing Jesus to lead and guide us. So, a uh, personal encounter with Jesus leads to life-changing experiences. I can tell you a lot of stories about what has happened as a result of just me moving to Manila. The church was in a very big problem we moved in. But God has allowed his grace to be upon us to help change the situation and align the church into God's purposes. So I am so mindful of hearing and obeying leads into encountering God. There are many cases God, by his sovereign power, will intervene so people can encounter him. There are many cases where, where different encounters happen, but real encounter that leads you to fulfilling God's plan and purpose is only when you hear and obey. As I finish, 
I sense in my spirit, in my heart, that there are, like I said a while ago, there are people here, you have come, you have done everything possible and, you know, you're discouraged, disappointed, or regret. I wish I have never done this, or I should have not decided this, or I should have not got involved with this kind of people and you would be in that situation. Today, God wants to help you get you out from those situations so that you can fulfill his plan and purposes in life. And so I want to give that opportunity for you to respond so that we can pray. And maybe there are a few others here who, who are here just visiting. Or maybe here for a very first time, or you've been here for a couple of times, but you have never made a real decision to allow Jesus to take control of your life. This is your time, and you can make that response. So I want every eyes closed, please. Can you bow your heads and close your eyes, please? But this, if this is your first time, or you've been coming to church, uh, Come in and go in, you, but you have not really surrendered your life, and you would like to do that this morning. Can I ask you to raise your right hand, please, and say, yeah, it's me, and I would like to surrender my life. I would like to give my heart to Jesus. I like Jesus to, Jesus, I would I like to allow Jesus to engage in my personal life. Raise your right hand up. Please raise it up quickly. Yeah, thank you. I could see a hand there, please. Is there any more? Can you raise your hand? Okay. Can we all rise up, please? Can we all stand? Jesus is in this place. I can sense. And I believe God is speaking to you as this encounter in Jesus. The story is, when I think of it, just a stranger yet with the consciousness that this could be God this could be the point of changing my whole life this could be the change of changing my situation I should just allow him to come through you could do that today those of you who just raise your hand can I invite you to come forward please so I want to I want to pray with you. Is that right? While the, while the song is going on, you come, please. Just, just stand here in front and we're going to pray for you.